the Public Media Alliance, of which I'm CEO, is uh, the largest global association of public media organizations. So unlike ABU, EBU, who had a lot of content sharing, Eurovision, um, our work is really around providing support and advocacy for public media worldwide, because it's changing. We've seen here the discussions. And anybody can be a member if they use public media, if they self-define as public media. But we're working to create an index so that we can understand better what public means in different parts of the world and what public media means in different parts of the world. I think it's, it's always difficult to justify um, in some ways you're traveling. Uh, I have to say Sinai is just stunning. I'm so glad it's here and not Bucharest, which is very rude, but I'm a country girl. Mm -hmm. And the air and everything in Sinai is beautiful, but it is important because maybe it's a reminder we also serve rural audiences. Too often we meet in capital cities. But for us to meet as media players and be able to have personal contact is invaluable. So Media 2020 with many Asian broadcasters, PBI with uh, many public broadcasters, just bringing those together. And it always works better to have two events because then people just travel once. And for me, yes, we Skype, we Zoom, but to see somebody, to sit down and share a little bit of our personal lives, actually builds closer networks and we then work together better professionally. I think uh, I would love to see us come out more strongly as public broadcasters because I think in the digital world we've been a bit shy, we've been a bit scared to say actually we're public media and this is different. We're not just about entertainment. Entertainment is important, it's our glue. But actually we are where audiences, and we, we do research worldwide, audiences have trust they need credible news, particularly at times of disaster, emergency and crisis. But we need to stand up and say our news is trustworthy. So in the Caribbean, we've just trained 20 social media journalists. They're using social media. Um, this is a platform, but they are for established public media organizations. And they are making sure that the standards of their social media is the same as their radio, their TV. And in fact, then when we had Hurricane Irma come through, very quickly, uh, there were circulating some terrible images uh, meant to be of Barbuda. This was before actually the storm had hit Barbuda, and it was proved that um, this was fake. So somebody just doing it is a bit of a joke, a bit of a fake. But this is lives. So I think we have to say to our governments and to our public, public media is something different. It's about public values and building public trust. So, you know, there's so much fake news. We all working see the nice, sexy clip of some star story. We've got to learn, we've got to build media literacy into what we do so that people can distinguish and understand that what we say is, is reliable and truthful. I think uh, Radio Romania is typical of many of our member broadcasters in that very often they are funded in sometimes a very a different way, but they have become quite big with staff, with extra burdens, they're civil servants. But I think it doesn't matter how big you are. Actually, I like being radio, because we have one great example in uh, New Zealand. Radio New Zealand TV is no longer public media. So Radio New Zealand said, OK, I have a platform. I have a, I have a brand. I'm established. So from Radio New Zealand, they expanded on to online. They now have a, a, a globe, globally award-winning digital youth magazine. It has images, it has video, and that's all from the platform that started with radio. So I don't see radio because radio gets us anywhere. You know, radio stretches our minds. It's not like watching TV where we just, oh, doesn't matter what we're seeing, we're slobbing out as we say. Radio stretches us. And so if I was in your position as Radio Romania, I think you've got the most amazing platform. Um, I had a, a message from my stepdaughter who works in the arts overnight saying, oh, you know, I've worked for so many years with Romanian poets. Is it really like that? And I've said to her, what hits you here is the importance of culture. That is part of Romania's DNA. I have to say great food is as well, fresh food. But the, the, the value that everybody, young and old, places on 
poetry, music, books, art. That is something you can sell to the world. You do it through your festivals, now do it through your radio.